what a beautiful day blue sky and the sun is pushing a lot of energy into the batteries hi everyone welcome to a new video of easypowerwall.com in the last video i installed the bus bars if you haven't seen it i'll put a link in the description of the video but there is still a missing link between the batteries and the bus bars so let's solve this missing link today I want to talk about three topics in this video. Let's start by installing the fuses and connecting to the bus bar. Secondly, I will install these plexi and the cable holders. And the third topic will be installing the cables, positive and negative, and connect them to the bus bars. If you have questions, don't hesitate, use the comments. And as always, all parts, all tools will be available in the link under the video. Hope to see you soon in one of the comments. The first cable is connected towards the bus bar. I was especially afraid for the first one because I had to bend it a little bit. The other one will be a little bit longer and this will be easier to attach them from the fuse holder towards the bus bar. And for that reason I turn the connector 180 degrees so it fits a little better, have some more room to fiddle with the cable and now it's uh, it's working. Of course I will add some heat shrink tube here from this this part and this part. But so far I'm, I'm pleased with the result. And another cable is made. Three down, one to go. Let's assume we make a connection between a fuse box and the bus bar. So I'll cut the cable. So this is 25 square millimeter. Look, I can do it with one hand. And as you can see, I have a clean straight cut end cable. I really recommend this one if you work with larger cable sizes. As always, the link is in the description of this video. Two high quality connectors. You have to remove like 18 millimeter or three quarter of an inch. Don't go too deep so you don't touch the strands. Perfect. This is the high quality connector. As you can see, there's a little bow and this helps you to get all the strands in the connector. These are two models. They're both for 25 square millimeter. Of course, this is the cheaper one. The weight, I think it's ratio one to three. And you see, they are much thicker. So if you want to go serious, you want to use lots of power, make sure you go for the high quality connectors. So the first one will be crimped with this tool. 25 square millimeter it's not needed or recommended but I always use or apply two crimps in the connector above 25 then you should use two so 25 you're a bit in the gray zone Number one, so this is the result. No, so I added some shrink tube as a future reference so we can compare it if we use the other tool. With this tool, you have to set the diameter. press and you go through all sizes but we need 25 so that's set correctly
So this is the result made with this tool. And there's no way you can remove this connector from the cable. So for review, I think if for 25, up to 25 square millimeter cable, I think I would always use this one. It goes much faster and it's at least, I think it's even better connected than the one with the uh, oil pressure. But there's just one issue, if you have to make cables up to 70 square millimeters, then you can't use this one. So it depends on your project. If you stick with sm smaller cables, it's feasible with this one. Just go for this one, it's cheaper. Otherwise, yeah, you need to invest a little bit more and go for this one. So that's how you make cables for your project. Pretty easy, straightforward. Just use the right tools and go for high quality connectors. That's key. Good luck in building your connector. What have I done so far? I installed the shunt. Look, I found these uh, great looking black screws that I used in another project. I had a few leftovers. So that's a uh, bonus points from the jury. I also polished the um, bus bar with some steel wool. And now I will slowly start to install these fuse holders. And first install, of course, the, the bus bar. So it's at its final location. I'll connect this one later at the right torque spec. I'm not sure, but I thought it was 10 Newton meter. I use these just to make sure the screw doesn't come loose. And now just hand tighten them and of course later I will apply some more force, also close to 10 Newton meter to make sure it won't come loose anytime soon. Later I will add a screw here. But I don't know if I'm gonna do it right now or wait till the negative wire from the batteries is attached. I'm probably gonna wait then have some more wiggle room. The initial plan was to install a cable gutter from shelf 1 up to shelf 2 to the top to house the cables that come from the batteries. But why should I hide this great setup and batteries in a cable gutter? So I came up with a plan to install just a plexi against this frame so you can see all cables running to the bus bars. So you can follow the flow of the battery, the flow of the energy. So what I'm gonna do, I ordered this five millimeter plexi and I will try uh, to install it. Not really sure if it's gonna work out, but at least I wanna give it a try. So I will mount some uh, extra wood here so I can attach it properly. Same here at the bottom shelf. Let's hope it pays off. I'm gonna drill a few holes in the plexi. Of course we have to be careful. It's not like wood or metal. We have to stay away f at least one centimeter from the edge. 7.5 Better put some weight on it.
So I found this on uh, AliExpress. You will find the link in the description. I'll hope this will hold four cables. That might be a challenge. I just tried it, but three is no issue. Four is uh, is a challenge, but we'll give it a try and see how it uh, turns out. So next step is to drill the holes. I have already two here and I'm drilling with a four millimeter. This should uh, hold the uh, M4 screw. These screws, but they're not long enough. I just bought 10 millimeter, but I need at least 14 or even 16. It just comes through the uh, plexi. I took the plexi board inside. I want to do this in a dust and uh, scratch free environment. I'm now populating this plexiglass <coughs> with these cable holders. So I already drilled the holes in the shed and now. Attaching them to the plexi boards. I'm still not sure about the outcome of this project. It might be uh, not a great idea. It might be a bit top heavy when the cables are mounted, but let's give it a try. If it works out, it will be very nice. So I mounted the, uh, the holders, tighten them with the screw, and now uh, I'll attach it to, uh, to the shelf. The positive wires are attached, mind, switches are still off. Now I'll mount the negative wires and when mounting this one, this might touch the positive uh, one. It will touch, so I'll add an extra layer of protection. I add some shrinking tube. But I won't heat it up before it's uh, really connected. Active cable will run under the bus bar. As you can see, there is not too much room for error. You can give and take a little bit here, but that's just it. So measure twice, cut once. 
also applies here for this procedure. Measured here, crimped here. So that's a lost connector, that's a real pity. Damn. Focus my friend, focus. Ah, I eat the chocolate <clears throat> and start with renewed energy. below the copper bus bar and install a cable holder here and I have at least like three centimeter clearance between the bus bar and the cable Adding the second cable too, and actually checking if I need two or one cable holder, but I think one will be just fine. Just came up with a better idea. I have these smaller cable holders as well. And hey, I think it's neater, smaller. I like it. So I will replace these two giants and replace them with a smaller model. At first I didn't like them too much, but honestly, I think it's a nice solution. Otherwise it will be cluttered with these uh, large cable holders. Just add, added cable number three. If you have to line it up and install the cable holder, one or two pieces, I think I will in, install two, like I did with the previous cables. And now the last one will go in an almost 90 degree angle behind the insulator towards fuse number four. I'm sorry, I just forgot to press the record button, but as you can see, I connected the two remaining cables. Now I'm installing the cable holders. Now four batteries are connected to the fuses, the current will go through the fuses to this bus bar going to the shunt and here on this bus bar I can connect the inverter and the MPPT charger. As you can see in this picture I alternated the connections on the bus bar. Open spots are for the MPPT charger and the inverter. This is better for current distribution. So I'll attach these two to this one, so I don't think they will need support. 
this one will hold the cables without installing extra support. So let me connect these two cables to the bus bar and then I'll come back to you. In the meantime, let me show you something. Something maybe you should take care of. <clears throat> you see there is no issue here, but if I could do this over again, I would go a bit more straight. Don't make the angle too wide and make the angle a bit shorter. Because I have to connect wires here that will go under this bus bar. But first, let's put two connectors to these two cables. You have seen, I've done already many cable connections, so I won't bother you with that process. But once it's done, I'll come back to you. I've connected the two negative wires from the MPPT chargers to the bus bar, the negative bus bar. Well, let's end the video here. Connecting the MPPT charger was not in the scope of this video. However, before we close the video, I want to show you a few more things. Do you remember I mentioned the top load of this flexi board? I was a bit afraid it would be too flexible, but as you can see, it's very sturdy with the cables attached. You don't have to worry about that. I changed the configuration a bit. I had these extra holders connected to connect all cables next to each other. But at the end, I changed the configuration and I have the cables connected two on two on top of each other. So these holders are unused for the moment. Maybe have another application for them later in the project. Let's end the video here. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. And please consider subscribing to this channel. See you soon for another video on easypowerwall.com. Bye-bye.